Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, just about 10.30 in Honolulu, 4.30 in New York. It is Monday, March 27th, 2017, and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. Following the pulling of the health care bill on Friday, in which that occurred really when the market had just gone to a close, we saw a reaction to that overseas when trading began last night into, of course, today's trading putting the Dow Jones and U.S. equities under pressure, dollar falling out of bed, and gold having a substantial gain all off of uh, the activity on Friday. First, let's take a look at gold prices. We are looking at most active contract of gold futures. This would represent April, and that is trading at 1254.70. The high is interesting. We'll want to talk touch on that. 1261 with a low of 1245. So we've actually had a pretty good range on the day, currently trading up about six dollars. 1257.60 up six dollars. That is our June contract. And the reason, of course, that that is so important is we are currently long from 1237. When we look at cash gold, as you can see, 1254 up about twelve dollars on the day, almost a full percentage gain. Now, in terms of silver pricing, uh, silver is also gaining and gaining tremendously. As you can see, when we look at silver futures, up over 2% on the day, a 37 cent rise at $18.12. We will certainly want to take a look at a silver chart on today's show. So traders, absolutely no doubt a nice upside move for gold today. We're looking at most active April's contract, as I said, a 1254.50, putting it up about $6 on the day. Now, there's a couple of things that we can see quite easily just by looking at this daily chart. The first thing is, is if we draw a line across not so much the highs over the last three trading days, but the real bodies which come in. You can see this real set of resistance, these headwinds at around a 1250. We certainly broke through that and broke through that with a vengeance and closed in that area. However, at the same time, if we look at this high, this high comes in at 1261, and we have this high here at 1265. That is the high that we need to take out and take it out effectively on a closing basis. My sense is that if, in fact, we're able to see gold break above this particular price point, our next real strong target has got to be $1,300 per ounce. We know we have solid support at $1,200. We've absolutely formed a base here and strong support, and we've had a substantial rally now of, uh, you know, over $50. Now, typically, a strong rally in gold is anywhere between $100 and $160. Based upon that, if this is a real rally, which I believe it is, we should see gold break above that price point. So traders, in terms of our upside target as well as our current support areas, we talked about the fact that we absolutely have major support at 1200, no doubt. We've got another area at 1211 and then 1231, that's the 23% retracement. That is where I think we should see really effective, strong, major support in the market. We know that we have resistance right now at about 1265, and that is the yearly high that was achieved. Above that, 1282 is a one to one, and the relationship of one to one is the fact that we're using a fib extension, and it was an extension of this, this move here, starting from the bottom here. So the one to one would have take would take us to 1282. A 1.23 extension is 1304. That in fact is where my current target will go to. Silver that once again is truly shining. And we're looking at the most active March contract, tremendous upside surge, up about 37 cents over a 2% gain. When we convert this particular chart to a Japanese average chart, what you'll see is that it does show that the trend is still not only fully intact, but really pretty strong here. Also below it, MACD, and we did get a cross most recently. So we could see some more upside in silver. My upside target right now is just the yearly high though. It is around 1850. Above that is $19. Those are the two areas that I am looking at for current resistance in silver. In other markets that we follow, Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 
45 points as we went into the close. But traders, most of the losses from earlier this morning were definitely made up. We had the Dow down, I believe, intraday about 150 to 180 points lower. Ends up closing down only two-tenths of a percent. As I said, 20,000. 550. So when we look at the indices themselves, interesting action because the S&P was nominally lower, I'm going to say fractionally unchanged, but traders take a look at the NASDAQ. Even with the uh, lower Dow and lower S&P, NASDAQ was more than resilient, trading higher for the better part of the day, closing up about two tenths of a percent. Now, dollar index under pressure and this is critically important because when we look at today's higher pricing in gold, about 57% of that is due to a weaker U.S. dollar with the remainder normal buying entering in the market. And that, of course, according to the Kitco Gold Index. And lastly, a crude oil. Crude oil continuing its drop now below $48 at $47.76. So traders, in other markets that we follow, the dollar is the one that we really want to watch as close as possible because of its relationship to gold and the fact that we have an active gold trade going. We're looking at a basic daily chart candlestick format in which we're starting from about 80, uh, this low right in here that comes in, what, June, July of 2014, up to the record top, so at 103, just before 104. So it's quite an extensive Fibonacci retracement in terms of scope and we've identified the 23% retracement level at 98.19 the 38 at 94 so these are major levels you will see that we have had a decisive break last week I put major support in the dollar index at this point uh, and that's based upon this longer term study at two spots the first spot is this high here we can see that we had a low that went in there it's exactly at 99 and then 98.19 and that, of course, is the 23% retracement of that large move that we just spoke about. So I think that we have more downside potential in the dollar. Traders, in conclusion, we are looking at the uh, June contract of gold futures, 1257.70, up $6 on the day. We are long at 37. Solid body size, definitely breaking above any kind of minor resistance we had in these tops here. Uh, commodity channel index moving positive last week. I feel pretty strong about a continued upside move, but as I said, Throughout the show, we first have to, on a closing basis, trade and close above uh, this particular high based on the April. That was 65. I think it's 67 when we converted to June. But we've got to see an effective close above this particular price point. And I have laid out our upside targets. Maintain your current long position. Maintain your current stop, although we will tighten that this week. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you, as always, good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.